Thank you for joining us for this Trail Trash public service announcement. Alpine Stars, it wasn't worth spending your money on. It smells nice when you got it. Oh, it does smell nice. It smells beautiful. When it looks beautiful comes, too. It looks pretty. It's a shame because when you get it, it does look so good. It fills you with joy. It does. And it, it, you like, get excited. You look at this and you're like, oh damn, this boot looks freaking tough it's as hell. Sexy. Tough it's as sexy. hell. It's badass. I want to wear it to Starbucks. It's going to get me laid. Yeah. I'm going to look so oh. good outside of Tim Hortons in this boot. But you know what? If you leave that Tim Hortons parking lot, it won't last. If we use the word review, we were wrong. <coughs> this isn't a review. This is a trail trash opinion. I it's mean, just our opinion. We're just it is kind of a review. Opinion. What? What should we title the video then? It's not oh, really a review. This is it's our slander. Trail trash slander. That's <laughs> <laughs> not even really slander. Yeah, but that means we're saying it with malicious intent. We're not saying it with malicious intent. We really just don't want no, other we people. Have good we have good intentions. We really just don't want other people to have the same freaking experience. We think you can probably spend your money better Elsewhere. somewhere else. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately. Yeah. And I really wish oh, that we could say. Oh, it's a warning. It's not an opinion. It's not a review. It's a warning. Yes. Trail Trash ADV. Public service now. Yes. Yes. Warning. Yes. Alpine stars. Yes. Scamming customers. Bam! Clickbait! Clickbait title! Clickbait title! <laughs> <laughs> Where you broke the Throw that up. Yep. Okay. Drinking whiskey, smoking cigars. And... <sighs> Any of this. This might be the intro. I don't know. and salute to all of our <laughs> viewers out there. We are here today with um, not a gear review, just um, an opinion on some Alpine Star product from the last 10 years. Stuff that we have spent our own hard-earned dollars on and uh, spent thousands and thousands of kilometers riding in um yeah you've probably put how many thousand kilometers on those boots these 50 or 60 yeah in a year i put 10 or 12 on these on, on the two cans already so we've get, we've put some miles in these things i guess i'll kind of start the boots of old so this is an alpine stars scout waterproof boot this is a 2010 model. It's got a polyurethane, I think, coating on a actual leather boot. And it's really well stitched. It's remarkably waterproof. Um, you, you probably can't see in the video, but the, the, the workmanship of the leather, <coughs> the natural leather is, is actually beautiful. Like it's, it's really nicely built. Oh, oh, excuse me, I was going to go out, and then I I lost my... <sighs> Sorry, man. It happens. Oh, jeez. Anyhow. We've thrown off the Emperor's groove. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I don't know if you can see these, but I went for a really good slide in these boots. On asphalt, thankfully wearing proper gear, as everybody should, and... This is the boot that I went for the slide on, and it looks like brand new. The buckles are great quality. Um, I like the system. It was easy to use. It didn't, um, it didn't back itself off. Once I adjusted it to where I wanted it, I ride with knee braces because this boot was a little shorter. Instead of having to worry about my knee brace fitting into the boot, just compared to the... The tech three there. Yeah, it's, a, it's just a touch yeah, shorter. So just instead a of touch. my 
knee brace fitting into the boot. It kind of sat into this first part and then against, and I really liked the way that it held it into place. Um, and how tall without, are you, Carl? I'm six feet. I weigh 200 to 205 pounds, depending on my morning activities. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And that's a size nine. Nine and a half. Nine and a half. Nine and a half. Um, I have wider feet. I found these really comfortable for someone with wider feet. Ah, uh, I really like this boot. I got this boot second hand, um, but brand new. It kind of pushed me into riding motorcycles again. My father passed away and I got all of his gear and it was just sitting around and it encouraged me to go purchase a bike and I got to put the final, I don't know, 12,000 kilometers on a set of boots that he started in the, his riding career in, which was awesome for me. Um, the one complaint I had about the boot was the sole. Um, these were pretty much brand new when I got them. They'd maybe seen 15 kilometers. He just bought them and got diagnosed and couldn't really ride anymore. And I loved the waterproof, I loved the feel, the comfort on your controls with your feet, the response, it was beautiful. Um, they're not steel toe, there's not a crap load of protection, but they've got a uh, small plate in the shin, and I ride with knee braces on, so I don't need as much of the upper shin protection in a boot um, that someone else might need or require in their riding. Um, so I really, really like these boots, but here comes my issue. I couldn't find anything comparable to this on the market, especially not from Alpine staff. So I thought to myself, I will take advantage of their wonderful resoling program. Before a hundred dollars American, which I don't know the exchange rates, but it's that about would probably 1. 3, be one. So 135 yeah, probably? 135 Canadian, plus ship shipping. It. So you're, you're at almost 200 yeah, the time. Yeah, almost at $200 Canadian. I'm <clears throat> three quarters of the way to a brand new set of mid to entry level boots, depending on if I buy a year's past model or a brand new model. Or you can just go get a pair. Comp fives for yeah. that price. Or you can get a <laughs> pair of comp fives for that price. But we'll get to that. Um, shit. So, I looked and looked and I couldn't find anything. And to resole them, I might as well go buy a new pair of boots. So I hung on to them in thoughts of maybe someday. <laughs> Bless you. Woohoo! Whoa, we have some, uh, we have some snot COVID line in here some tonight. COVID symptoms in here, for <laughs> sure. Super spreaders. The next super spreading came from Trail Track. So, I apologize. We were planning on throwing everything up on the whiteboard as we went, but evidently I dropped the ball. Um, so this is the scope. So we've got model, price, pros, cons. So this is the scope model from approximately 10 years ago, right? Yes. Um, it was approximately $300 Canadian. You said 230 American. We're just doing some general math there. You can't buy them anymore. So we're just guesstimating on this particular model. Um, it was a scope model, $300. They are exceptionally waterproof. The workmanship is excellent. Um, natural leather. The cons, the freaking soles. Yes, the soles. And uh, yeah, the soles, really just soles. That'd be my only comment. Okay. Which leads us to what I bought after... Now, balling on a budget. Yeah, and, and we're all about budget. Like, really, we don't get anything for free. So everything we buy is us trying to find the best value for money. Yeah. Like, we really, we really don't like wasting money. <laughs> no, I don't have a lot of it to waste. And uh, so when I'm going to spend some money, I... I really hope for good product. So I was, I was really happy with my Alpine Star Scout waterproof boots. I wanted to buy more Alpine Star product. I figured that you know the Garnies and IDs or S the CDs, yeah, CDs, 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 CDs excuse my poor redneck. Um, 
vernacular, but I have <laughs> trouble with the words and their pronunciation and sometimes. sometimes I have a hard time yeah. with the words that are trying to escape from my mouth yeah. hole. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> I just can't freaking tell. We're kind of, we're kind of far up north. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> yeah, the cold's affecting my brain. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is more of an entry-level boot, right? Entry-level motocross boot. You get this lovely protective injected molded super stiff yeah like super cold. stiff they're oh yeah armored all the way through there you get the protection so they're yeah yeah where do you hear relative oops, the other one sorry Dad. yeah whereas this is just a leather boot so it's a little lighter flexy you know really you can walk in it yeah yeah yeah, so, I mean, it is definitely an adventure boot. Um, this, motocross boot. But I figured for a mid, I guess, entry level, because you can get the tech ones, and there's, I don't know if there's twos. I, I should probably What are they on, that. the tech nines now? Well, they have tens and stuff. Oh, okay. They have some really great <laughs> boots, but they're going to cost you $1,000 if you want them. And so... <clears throat> I don't have thousand dollars to spend on boots. <laughs> Stay in school. <laughs> um, don't sell yourself short, man. Uh, so he I, isn't he. He isn't that bad. <laughs> like he's like, if, 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 <laughs> if nothing if nothing else, he's humble. If nothing else. <laughs> um, so Alpine Star Tech Three. Uh, I got the boots. Uh, I was super excited because they were red. I know, I know. The childish things that we get excited for. Um, Color coordination is important. And the first thing that I loved about them was the sole. And I know it's a motocross sole and the other sole is more of an adventure style sole. But I feel like if they could just give us something in the middle that would wear like this, it would be exceptional because i think that this is the same sole that's on the tuscan yeah, the toucan, toucan the yeah. toucan it is the same sole on the scout that's on the toucan which is their new model and uh it's just not it's just not the answer it's not the answer so one of the biggest pros of this boot besides the exceptional amount of protection you get um is the sole, the wear and tear that the sole takes. I've put, I think 50, close to 50 thousand kilometers on this, uh, just in one season. And they've, the soles have held up incredibly. Um, how do you feel about um, the waterproofness of them? Are they at all waterproof? No, it's non-existent. You get, you do not get waterproof. You get protection, but you don't get waterproof. You get wet feet um, with your protection. And so, how much did those run you, my good sir? I got these on sale because okay. they were the model years before. Why don't we just check on Fort Nine? Because you can probably get a pair now, eh? Probably. You can yeah. Why don't we? Why don't we just pull out Fort Nine's website and uh, see what their price is? Three hundred dollars right now. Uh, on Fortnite. On Fortnite. So you can get a brand new pair of Tech Three Enduros, two ninety nine ninety five. So we're looking at the that's same price. The, you might as well bring up our next one while you're right that's there too. The tech uh, Three Enduros. It's the Tech Three or the Tech Three equivalent as of today. Um, so that would be uh, March twenty twenty one. Anything else you want to add? Uh, to the Tech Threes, man, or anything you want to add to the the two boots you've talked about thus far? I spend three hundred dollars on a pair of boots, entry yeah. level or not. Yeah, but I spent three hundred dollars on this entry level pair of boots. They, other than the soles, have held up better to every whack and bump. So you get the protection, but the protection is, as you can see. It takes one shot and then it's compromised in an area. 
and then it takes another shot, and it's compromised in another area. And the buckles. And then the buckle system is the same antiquated fucking bullshit <laughs> that they have had on, um, like, we, everybody, has been saying that this thing is shit, and it slips out, and it doesn't hold good tension for, God, it feels like my entire lifetime, but yet, here they are, still, on a $400 pair of boots. Yeah, after tap. Yeah, because you're 345. But, yep. 10 fucking years ago, <laughs> 10 years ago, look at this shit. La 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 la. Boom. I struggled because I've been drinking, but, okay, there we go. Smooth. And you can hear it. That's 10 years yep. later. And they've slid across the asphalt. And Click. This, this is the one that took most of the impact. And they look replaceable. Click. They look replaceable. And they're replaceable. They're definitely replaceable. Here's the problem. Ten years ago. Things are not made to last anymore. And as you're going to see as we keep going through this and we get to our last pair of the high-end uh, Alpine Stars boots for their adventure stuff. Entry-level high-end? Entry-level high-end, yeah. we'll say, sure. Uh, I don't know what else is up there, but the what tens. I was looking... The tens. Okay. Ten. But for adventure, this is kind of their top, top of the line. Yeah. Um, you're going to see the reliability has, has not improved. It has uh, gotten decreased. worse. It's decreased. It's decreased. It's decreased a ton. It's it's almost cri it's almost criminal. Because um, this took how how far did you slide the pavement with that? Forty v. Yeah, I was doing ninety, and. I didn't come to a dead stop on the bike. I came to a dead stop on the other side of the vehicle that hit me probably 40 to 50 feet away after sliding. Yeah. And I just stood up. I literally just stood up. And I slid that far going almost 100 kilometers and I survived. My helmet was dummy. My boots were completely fine. It doesn't even look like the leather touched a... Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just, I can't say enough about the durability of this boot, which is why I held on to them, because I'm hoping I can find a local cobbler who is able to resole my boot. Yeah. And we understand, you know, there's so many different factors that go into crashes and tip overs and all this stuff. And we understand every impact is different. Every crash is different. But I've seen you as well in those boots off-road crashing hard many times and you never, ever, ever had an issue with those boots other than those soles. Yeah. Where you go for one crash in these, and your buckle's done, and you can't replace them. $345. <laughs> flush it down the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's this... Cheap middle buckle. And the sad thing is, is I think that some of their higher-end models have this. And it just breaks away. It's literally attached to nothing, and then its nothingness is attached to nothingness, and then they thin it out. So it's like it's there to just look like it's doing something, because it's really not. My duct tape will be there forever, probably. Indestructible. <laughs> See, in three minutes, I red-greened this and made it better than the factory. In three minutes. Maybe Alpine Stars is hiring. Yeah, maybe they're hiring. I can get into their engineering. But yeah. as you can see, every shot that this boot took, be it on a track or out in the woods or shit it felt like just walking down the driveway there was Something obvious else. evidence of extreme wear and i just feel like for my money it wasn't really freaking worth it <sighs> so you get the protection but you just don't get it for that long yeah it almost seems like the, the the marketing strategy now is buy it for a season. They want you buying a pair of motocross boots or adventure boots per season. Which is unsustainable. 
yeah. it, it, it's terrible for the environment. Obviously, they can make a boot better because they were making a boot better ten years yeah. ago. It's 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 awful. I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. It. I feel cheated. Um, and again, I haven't even talked about my experience yet. We haven't talked about capitalism. <laughs> now we're not communists or anything, but no, I just oh god. Don't like even relatively suggest that people get mad at that <laughs> word. We should get we should get Jeff in here. <laughs> Jeff's Jeff. American, just in case y'all didn't know, he's he's a Canadian and an American. He's dual citizenship. So. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about my experience with my particular set of adventure boots from Alpine Stars now. Um, and I was really down to these and the equivalent from CD, who, which I think it's CD Adventures, uh, I believe. S similar yes. price, Gore-Tex, um, the premium adventure boot from Alpine Stars right now. Um, so the Gore-Tex liner, I'm going to take this right out of my mouth so you can hear me talk. The Gore-Tex liner, also, oh, sorry, let's start at the start. So the buckles, the buckles are great. They're from their their upper end tech series. Um, they're replaceable. They're really hardy. I've been down a couple times. I haven't had any issues with the buckles, but I haven't been down hard. Um, the Gore-Tex liner doesn't start up here. It doesn't start until it gets down to where you see the gray. Um, but my feet have yet to get wet. Um, so the waterproofing is good. The armor is good good. Um, it's a little stiffer, but it has this hinge so that when you're hiking, it's actually okay. Um, but you'll notice it's very, very similar to another boot we've already shown you. In fact, you'd probably say it's basically the same boot because it is. The styling, everything is this. It's, and it's the same <coughs> sole. They're using the same <coughs> sole on this boot that they used on this one 10 years ago. That wasn't that great. Yeah, that wasn't that great. And guess what? Guess what I'm having issues with on my 650 plus tax set of two cans? Soles. And it's driving me nuts because I know that it's systemic. It's almost on purpose. And it, it, it's a 650 plus tax pair of boots. I would I put, almost buy a whole other bike for that. Yeah. I put 8,000 kilometers on those in one week, one trip, right? I didn't dismount the bike. I didn't crash. I wasn't doing anything crazy. I was just going on a long distance overland journey. And when I got back, the soles are separating from the boot. And you can't really see it from here, but they're literally just coming right off. Um, shoo -gooed, didn't yeah. You? And I shoo -gooed the back because there's essentially... These are hollow, so if you put a hole in this, yeah. there's nothing else. It's hollow underneath. But there's a steel shank hidden yeah. inside. So if you don't damage the steel shank, they'll replace the sole after you pay them. But if you damage the steel shank, they can't replace your boot sole. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's a little tidbit for that's you dirty. Um, But yeah, and the other problem... Because they don't actually replace the upper sole. They replace the bottom sole and mount right. it on, right? Yeah. So, polish it up a little bit, yeah. spit shine and send it back to you for yeah. almost $200. Yeah. Um, so, and the issue with having a hollow sole like this is when you get little nicks in it, water will get in and then it'll never get out. So it'll just rot your boot from the inside. Um, which is just yes. terrible. Deteriorate the rubber. Yeah. Which is hollow. Yeah. And trapped in water. So I noticed the deterioration in those boots after 8,000 kilometers and two months. So I shoo-gooed, I shoo-gooed them, um, and I didn't think to reach out to Alpine Stars because my riding season was over, right? Um, and then guess what? By the time I got around to finally emailing them this year, warranty was up. And uh, they were like, yeah, too bad. It's $100 US to resole them, and then plus the shipping. So again, we come in close to, close to $200 by the time everything's told. What I found extremely interesting, though, was in chatting with the guy from Alpine Stars uh, via email, he said that don't worry about the quality of the sole because it's going to be better than factory. Why would it be better than factory? If it's made in factory. What? Why 
why is it better than a factory? The that indicates time, to me... The second time yeah, that you... Yeah. That indicates to me that they know there's a problem, right? They can, oh yeah, we can rope people into sending it to get resold once, but we probably can't get them into doing it twice, so let's just make sure the second time we put the soul on, it's real good. And again, this is just us... Venting. Venting Giving and you our opinion. speculating. Yeah. But... Uh, fuming. Fuming, really, yes. Um, okay, let's throw the rest of this up on the board. The toucan. Waterproof. Oh. Yeah. Toucan. Six fifty. Six fifty plus tax. Because these are taxes in these two. So we're um, seven fifty. I don't know. I'm not good at the math. But it was uh, 75. Yeah, we're basically at 750. So a little less than 750 dollars for the two cans. The protection, great. Wow, I'm getting worse and worse at this. The waterproof, <laughs> great again. But the soles, they suck. The soles suck, and I, I, I feel like we're I we're beating a dead horse. The stitching quality. I would argue that the stitching quality and the material quality of this boot isn't quite as nice as its 10 year old counterpart either no i agree with that i if agree with that you're paying that much look at how much leather they used on that 10 year old yeah. boot and then look especially how much dead animal is combined with fake stuff on that lovely like it's just beautiful so this is all leather right this is the whole boot basically and this is all this synthetic crap and the stitching is extremely poor I have some photos from the first pair of boots I actually received, and the stitching is so out of alignment with where the lines are to actually stitch it in the material. I sent them back, and I sent the photos, and they're like, yeah, we'll we'll send you another pair, because they were Wait, atrocious. Wait, so you bought these and sent these back, got them, and then they were still just garbage? Yeah. I just asked for my money back. Well, see, I, <laughs> but... Uh, I was I was going on this seven thousand kilometer trip and I was like I need a pair of waterproof motocross boots and yeah. I ordered them. It took them three weeks to get to my house, um, and when they finally did arrive, I looked at them and I still have the photos. So maybe I'll throw them up. And again, the stitching is all over the place. They look like they have to be maybe maybe banged or worn a bit too. Um, and I just said like if this is an indication of the level of quality that I'm going to be getting, like I don't want it. But I was reassured. It was just a one-time thing. It wouldn't be an issue. I did get my new pair, and the stitching is better. There's still a bit that's off. It's still a bit out of the lines, but I was I was reassured, non-issue. And guess what? It hasn't been an issue thus far. It's the sole. Um, so yeah, I I I'm I'm really disappointed in the performance of the boot for the money I paid. I expected those to last at least two years before I had to go and resole them. Um, because typically I wear my motocross, motocross boots. Yeah. If we're doing really intense off-road stuff, yeah. I'll bring the Comp 5s. Yeah. Um, which is just another entry-level motocross boot, which is held up way better than my Tech 3s, as much as I hate to say that. And you um, know what? Let's talk about the Tech 3s versus those for a second, and the buckle design, and why, the same and why they put the same buckle design on their entry-level boots. That they they decided to put them with a little bit of at least there's replaceable components mm. on them. Yeah. But like. But what Colin and I were saying, well, the two of us were saying is, if you look at the buckles on this, the where how there's a plastic shank that comes across and then it kind of almost bolts in there um, or clicks in. These are replaceable, right? And the issue that those have been having, these ones, forever and ever and ever, is they're mounted all the way over on the opposite side of the boot. So this isn't actually, this is attached to nothing here. So it just broke off. So my buckle is held, my buckle is duct tape right now. Yeah. And then I put a couple bands on it to make sure it stays tight while I ride. As opposed to the Toucan, which has this plastic shank all the way from this side, and you can see it's 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 uh, sewn right in. 
it goes up into this piece too to help secure it. I think it's sewn down in there too. And then it finally connects over here. So it's much stronger, it's much sturdier. I think we should take a second and just have a conversation about what makes a good adventure boot and then what makes a good boot just in general for different purposes. Like, you can see so many differences between this strictly dirt boot and then, can you put that toucan back up here for oh, me? Oh, absolutely, please, sir. sir. All right. Sorry, and then the toe of the toucan. Profile, height, shape, protection. I mean, they're close. They're very close. This is on the upper end of your boot market, so it should be giving you more protection. But the things that you get in an ADV boot that you don't necessarily get in a dirt bike boot is a little bit more flex, a little bit more comfort when you're off bike walking around. Mm. You're supposed to get a little more traction on the sole. Um, Which I'd say you do. They are, those two cans are comfortable to ride in all day and then, you know, walk around camping. I wouldn't want to go for a get, prolonged time. You get a softer, a softer sole on it. Yeah. So, I would argue that I'm more comfortable on those days that we're out for a really long time in the harder, more technical stuff on this nice stiff sole that takes a little bit of, well, it puts a buffer between me and the pegs, which puts a bit more of a buffer between my joints and everything as I take impacts and go over obstacles. Also, you are given more protection. But that's not necessarily what you want in an ADV boot. You want mobility and you want waterproof and then you want that protection. But my thoughts are you would want more protection on an ADV bike than you would on a dirt bike. And I know that sounds preposterous because you jump dirt bikes, you know, 30, 40, some people plus feet in the air. But a dirt bike weighs 219 pounds. And when I drop that on my ankle, not doing any sort of speeds at all, there's not as big of a chance that it snaps my ankle like a toothpick. Ooh, you know what? I'm gonna throw up the shot of Brad tipping over that KTM 790. Yeah. Right on it, he was going over a culvert. Yeah. It fell over oh, right onto his shorty. Like like this height, this it's <coughs> wearing shorty this height of boot street right boots. There. Oh, yeah. Wearing oh, shorty gotcha. street boots. And that's why. Your and he was limping all weekend. Yeah. yeah. And lucky to have his leg and ankle. Yes, he lucky was. Lucky we didn't have to airy back him out. Actually, yes. It was extremely lucky. Yeah. Yeah, because we were we were in Lowlands Cove in northern Cape Breton next to Meat Cove, basically the last place on earth before Newfoundland. Yeah. So it doesn't it it doesn't pay. Sorry, got a piece of cigar. It doesn't pay to cheap out. However, if you're gonna be spending that money. As a consumer, I'd after my rant if it made any sense, as a consumer, I want more for my money. Yeah. But not necessarily more for my money because you gave it to me for less. You've already done it. I had it once. You can't give somebody something and take it away. It just makes you look like a dick. Yeah. Sorry, Alpine Stars. So You're a dick. If you have this wonderful product, and people love it, and it's working for you, why wouldn't you give it a slight facelift and a little more protection, and maybe update the problems, as opposed to giving us something we didn't really ask for? And it certainly doesn't need to be really 700 needed. certainly doesn't need to be $750 certainly does not um, not with the quality of manufacturing I've seen and I I was willing to take it as I got a bad set but we have three boots from the past 10 years high end low end and they all have the same problems the old, the newer the boots get the worse they become, it's awful. So, 
if you're shopping for adventure boots, I really wish I could recommend Alpine Stars, and I'm sure you really wish you could too, because if you could, that means we wouldn't have wasted our money. I do. I wish I could sit here and be like, oh my god, Alpine Stars, you guys are the best. I just fucking think that you're like so awesome, and like, if you just like, your gear's the best, just give me some gear. <laughs> I just, but it's I just, not. It's I not just want good. Some gear, but it's, it's not good. It really isn't. It yeah. makes me want to stop wearing the seventy dollar motocross Alpine Star gear I got. Yeah, it like, makes me not want to have your stickers on my shit. Yeah, it makes me not want to represent your brand because it makes me feel like your brand stands for nothing. But and, yeah, I and I've I personally lost trust in Alpine Stars. Um. The fact that the only place to do it is the U.S., it's almost $200 by the time you get them repaired, yeah. and you're going to have to do that on basically every set of freaking boots you're going to get. And please, let us know what your experience has been in the comments. If we're out to lunch, please let us know. If you've had a great experience, we want to hear about it. If you've had a bad experience, we want to hear about it even more. So, what am I going to put on my feet this year? I don't know. I'd love to hear what people think. Yeah, I'd love to hear what people yeah. think. I'd love to hear your experiences. I'm going to need a new set of low-end motocross boots just for the ride this year. I want um, one boot that'll do both. Yeah. Um, so if you guys have suggestions for mid-entry-level boots that you had great experiences with, we want to know, we want to hear about it, please let us know. Um, I want to know about your experiences with the big companies. I want to know who stood by their product and who didn't stand by their product. So a great example is this lovely gentleman right here cracked his skid plate just out riding, recreational riding. And as a joke, put up a video, this is how you break an Outback Motor Tech skid plate. And which I and the re, I just want to reiterate the reason I put that up I was not looking for a replacement no, I no wasn't looking for anything just for I beat the piss out of that thing and if yes. you guys watched any of our stuff yes, we you know that to give them credit for making such an extraordinary product which they did and it was days less than days we we did it on the Cape Breton trip and I posted it the day we got back when we were like uh, getting yeah. everything unloaded and. That was probably two days later, maybe, no, not even. So two days later, the company reached out to him saying, that sucks, our product shouldn't do that, here's a new product, yeah. because you spent X number of dollars on it, we're willing to stand by it, oh, and when <sighs> it got here, it was improved upon the last model yep. that they made, They which like... Improved it. That's just unreal. What more can you ask for from somebody who's taking your hard-earned money? Yeah. Um, that's just the best. You want somebody who... I guess that's what I'm questioning. It's like, Alpine Stars, how fucking out of touch are you yeah. from wanting people to get out, get excited, and go riding and be safe doing it? Isn't that what you started making gear for so people could get out safely and ride affordably looking good i don't understand why everyone has to make so much goddamn money off of something yeah i don't understand economics though so <laughs> i should probably <laughs> just stop talking <laughs> <laughs> well guys we hope we haven't bummed you out too much but we we were frustrated enough with our experiences with about i don't know a thousand bucks worth of boots here we thought we'd get drunk and rant about them yeah as any sane person would do and of course we only not only did we have to rant about it we needed to put it on video so thank you for being part of our group therapy session and please let us know if we can be part of your group therapy session oh my god <laughs> but like honestly if you guys that could be our if podcast you, absolutely if you guys, cash group therapy yeah if you guys want to video in and chat with us and tell us about your experiences with stuff, email us. We'll uh, coordinate it. We'll get it done. And if you want to 
be in our video, you can be in our video. If you don't, that's fine too. We're happy to just chat with you and hear about your experiences and share our own. Um, it's always great when we have another member of the community. Get out and ride. Yeah, get out and ride, guys. I mean, it's a little chilly, but step up. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I know we certainly enjoyed making it. Um, if you're planning on doing some shopping as spring is in the air here in Canada, um, we'd recommend Fort 9. Um, we've, I've probably spent more than half of a lot of my paychecks there. Um, it's where we do all our shopping. Customer service is great. Prices are great. Yeah. Um, return policies are great. The return policy is actually yeah. ridiculous. It's yeah. top notch. Yeah. And we're actually a, one of the top 25 contributors for reviews on there. I don't use the Trail Trash ADV name. I use an alias, so you probably won't be able to identify us, but we have been on there for quite a while. Um, recently, we got accepted to the affiliate program. So if you guys are planning on making a purchase on Fort 9, again, that is not Alpine Stars Boots. Yes. If you click the link below, um, we get a small commission uh, back. Um, and it's a great way to support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. It just helps support us and helps us make some videos. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this. I, again, I know we certainly enjoyed making it. Salut oh. to you. Yes. <sighs> and to you. <sighs> and to 2021's riding season. Uh, may it relax. Yeah, <laughs> may it relax. Trill trash! <laughs> ADV! <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, Alright. My wife certainly doesn't. Alright, you try the outro. Uh, uh, hi, I'm Colin from Trail Trash ADV. No, no, they've already been listening to you talk this whole time, right? This isn't the intro, this is the outro. This is at the end. Uh, we're finished. We're finished. Maybe this is for the outtakes after the end. Okay. Because everything needs outtakes. It does need outtakes. Well, we have lots of outtakes, I'm sure. Ah. Uh, this rum tastes like bananas. I know. It's delicious. I'm not even intoxicated. I'm just happy. I'm just enjoying the flavors, really. I'm feeling myself. <laughs> Drop, it was me. Are we recording? We're recording. <laughs> <laughs> COVID! Ugh. Okay. Now, bless. Um, well, you've already got your first vaccine. That should be enough. No, I got it tomorrow morning. Oh, well, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and on that note.